Hi everybody, today we look at the abilities and the enhanced input that is needed to trigger the abilities via our keyboard. So you know the reference already, we start as always with the reference. We start with a couple of components that we already know because we have to bind different things to the ability, then we concentrate on this pink box. Starting here, we have the pawn class with the D on it, the silver D, I run out of, out of uh, chars. And here we have to bind a Lyra ability set to it to make an ability known to a pawn. That is something that we will create here. Next thing is the game feature data or the experience definition. They are the place to link Lyra input configs and the whole chain that you need for the enhanced input into. You can use both. If you use the Lyra experience definition, it's more per map a definition, a map um, based um, configuration, or the game feature data that is more global for your plugin. So if you look at the right here, this whole box, we will only concentrate on the left stream here in this video. Here, starting with the gameplay tag, the gameplay ability, the Lyra ability set, and then connecting it to an input tag with the Lyra input config. And down there, we recreate the enhanced input for our plugin to be used in parallel to the existing one that we at the moment use from Lyra. Rest of it, that is about yeah, how to make these abilities kind of productive, how to make the multiplayer enabled, how to react to them, how to listen to certain events in these abilities. And that is next video in a couple of days, hopefully. So we start here with a um, gameplay tag and a Lyra Lime, gameplay ability. Gameplay tag is needed to indicate that that ability is running. So I can um, react to it, I can listen to it. The Lyra ability sets takes that ability and binds it to a pawn class. And that is where we can add either we have a configuration or we also will see that we can add it via code or blueprint to an existing pawn. Down here, enhanced input starts with an input action. We bind it to a key with the input mapping context and we bind both of them together with the player mappable input config that we then link to one of our uh, main configuration files, as I said, either the experience definition for a map or the game feature data for the whole plugin. The input finger shot here, this gameplay tag, that is important because it binds together the um, ability system with the enhanced input. So that will be the trigger. It will never happen that you have a direct trigger and connection between a key press and an ability. It's always just referring to a gameplay tag and this gameplay tag will then trigger the ability. So the whole gameplay tag is a kind of binary storage central um, in Unreal and that is something that can be used in a lot of situation context to listen to, to look at changes for example and to use it for communication between very very different components and it's nicely decoupled so it's easy to use really. Also something in the next video mostly. So let's go a bit down to my pink box here and from E to I, we will start implementing. First, we create a new gameplay tag. You can do that in our configuration file. Then we bundle that to a very, very simple gameplay ability and yeah, then bind it to the pawn class and hopefully um, get it done on spawn. So first thing, let's copy it here, go to project settings to our gameplay tags. And here you have add new gameplay tag. Just press it here. Passing it, uh, that's to be removed. And should be here with ability, type, action, and here we go, finger shot. Okay, fine. Now a new gameplay ability. Let's create a folder first. Let's call it abilities. Entering it, it's a blueprint and it's based on Lyra gameplay, no gameplay ability. So GA for gameplay ability and then just finger shot. Let's open it, kind of simple. It's just two, three nodes, but still I copy it into the web here, right click, then copy it in and yeah, can close that again. 
and just passed it in. So it replaces the event activate ability. It has this play montage and wait, playing a montage that is from Lyra here, this uh, emote finger guns. And then it ends the ability, very important that you always end the ability regardless what happens and be done. Uh, yeah, maybe removing the stop when ability ends, then we see it regardless if the ability has ended or not. We will look more at flow control and abilities later. Let's switch to the class defaults. As I said, every ability needs that ability tag because it will determine if the ability is running or not if I look from the outside. So just here, look for the just created finger shot tag in type actions, and there we go. Small thing, normally the activation policy is on input triggered. We want to have it here on spawn. We don't have an input yet. So let's compile that. So ability is here, looks great, but we have to bound it to our pawn class. So for that, we need a Lyra ability set. So right click, that is a data asset, and it's a Lyra ability set. So let's put it from here, LAS, project and default. If you open it, you see you can grant abilities, you can grant effects, you can grant attributes like stamina. We add one ability, select our finger shot, but don't have an input tag yet that we need to trigger it via an input. We don't have that yet, we do it later. Let's see if it works also on spawn currently. For that, we have to tell our pawn that it actually was granted a new ability. So let's put it in here. Here's our set and save and try it out. Yeah, looks good. On span, you actually trigger that ability. You see the mode and looks good for a first step. Now let's stop that. First thing, let's put it back while uh, on, on input triggered. That is the normal state that we want to. But how can we extend the enhanced input that we're using? We're using it already from Lyra. So here's the input with the input actions that we use, the configs and the mapping. So that looks good, but we don't want to edit that naturally because next update will override what we did. We want to localize it and having the same chain in our plugins folder. So right click a new folder to clean it up a bit. And first thing that we need is this input action finger shot. So that is all right click under inputs, input action, just copy in here. And the input action itself does not do too much. You can give it a name. Um, it's more important if you want to add triggers or modifiers, but here we leave it as it is. So, okay, closing it down. Next thing is an input mapping context where we can connect input mapping context, connect the um, key press with the input action. So we add a mapping here, select our finger shot, let's filter here, and define a key, let's say F for finger shot. Yeah, that's it already. When if you want, you can add here the is player mappable, where player then can remap that key bind in the Lyra options menu that we created in one of the last videos. So category, let's say these are emotes. Okay. So saving it, next step, we have to bind that together and that is the player mappable input config. Let's call it PMI something. Again, it's an input, mappable input config. And here we have PMI BA for key and B for keyboard. It needs a name, you cannot leave it empty. And then you just add one of the contexts and select the IMC that we just created. Good. That is the basic enhanced input chain that we need always. And that is something that we now have to make known in our project. So next step, we need a new data asset down here. Oops, data asset that is of type 
Lyra input config. Input config, select, let's call it IC for input config, and then project name, let's say default. Here we have ability input actions where you can map an existing input action with an input tag. Our input actions is again our finger shot. The input tag is something we don't have yet. So let's create that. You see here in input tags, we have abilities already. A couple of them are predefined, but no finger shot. So adding it here, input tag, ability, finger shot. Now we have it. And it's bound now to our input action finger shots. Good. If this action is triggered and we bound the key to it, this input ability finger shot will be triggered system wide. So nice thing is now we actually have this input tag that we were missing. So let's go back here and bind this ability with this input tag that is now there. So clicking, let's search for finger. And here you see input tag ability finger shot is now available. And with this, we have it bound to our gameplay ability. Good. Now let's save it, close it down. Last thing of course is this whole chain now needs to be recognized by our plugin. As I said, either game feature or game play experience, we go to the game feature here because we started also with the Lyras. You see the Lyra is already here under game feature action at input config and that is what we are using. So let's add another array element and define our own PMI here. And that is again from type mouse and keyboard, okay? Last thing is we add another array element here on the actions and select one input binds. And here we just use our Lyra input config that we just created, input config, and we are done. So looking at that, we now use a mixture here between the enhanced input configurations coming from Lyra and the one that we now localized and can now use in the future to add more and more key bindings to it. Let's try it out. We still can run, that is coming from Lyra directly. And now pressing F, we actually start this emote, this finger shot. So looks good actually. There are of course a lot of things that we have to do. Look here, I start running, but the finger shot will not end. So there's no ending conditions, canceling conditions, and we are not um, doing much with it. That will not work in the long run. So that is something that we have to improve. Next video really will look into how to use these gameplay abilities kind of production ready. We want to start with a bit of gathering. And then really the question is, what are the conditions to cancel it? Can we listen to it if some input um, action was triggered or if an ability was canceled, how can we react to it? Um, how can we make it multiplayer enabled so that people see effects and stuff like that? And yeah. Should be there in a couple of days. Stay tuned and see you soon. Thank you.